Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. We, you know, it just, it's just a waste of your time and ours. And, man, look at all these folk in here. We don't have seats. We don't have room. I ain't no room for no foolishness in here. Yeah. Amen. You ain't assembling in here. You ain't interrupting this service. Brother, if you interrupt this service, we're going to treat you like you don't know where you are. You're going to get snatched up. Don't dump up and interrupt me. Because I believe if I'm speaking and I'm speaking through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost don't interrupt itself. So, bruh, this is the wrong place. Do that at the church with the little old ladies. And ain't no men. It's, it's some brothers in here. We're going to shake your life up. We're going to change your life, brother. We're going to redirect your energy. We're going to show you what a bunch of strong men feel like. Yeah, so don't, hey, hey. yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at somebody and say, get off of yourself. Amen. I'm going to start with this story of somebody who thought they were something. And Jesus had to check them. Matthew 19 and 16. This is the story of the rich young ruler. Approach the Savior, who is God of all in the flesh, one to be or one to equate himself to him. He felt that his earthly riches and being a ruler or whatever it was made him royalty in the earth. And if I'm royalty, then there must be something I can do to be equivalent with you, Jesus. So he comes to him and says, the Bible tells us, Matthew's account says, Behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? That's a very arrogant phrase. He says, Good master, meaning you're good. What can I do to be as good as you? And Jesus said unto him, Why are you calling me good? There is none good but one, that is God. In other words, why are you trying to call me good so that you can be good like me? That's what he's pretty much saying. Right there. There's only one that is good, and that is God. And we know Jesus is God. Yeah. But if thou wilt enter life, keep the commandments. So somebody say, uh-oh, that means I got to start keeping the commandments. No, you don't understand what he's saying here. He's saying that if you want to be good, keep the commandments. Oh, it's going to get real plain. You want to be good, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, which one? <laughs> he still ain't getting it. He said, thou shalt do, don't, don't murder anybody, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't bear false witness. And honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He said, I've done all these things. I've done this. I've kept all of this from my youth. So what are you talking about? So, so am, I, am I like you now? Jesus said, uh, if you want to be perfect, go and sell that that thou hast and give it to the poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven and do what? Come and follow me. Then you're ready to follow me. The Bible said, if it could make sounds, it would have said, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> but when the young man heard that saying, what did he do? He went away sorrowfully because he had great possessions. Oh, there's so much meat in this. Let's get in it. Our goodness or our idea of good is not the same as God's definition of it. Amen. Amen. God is perfect and his law is perfect. Because of the perfection of the law and our imperfection as humans, there is no way we can fulfill the entire law perfectly. So what Jesus was telling him was, there's no way you can be good, bro. You can't be good. You can do some good, but you can't be good. Only God is good. And if God isn't in you, you're not good. So Jesus starts this conversation with letting the ruler know that something is already wrong with his definition of good as it pertains to God. 
Something's already wrong because you came to me calling me good and then saying what you can do to be good. So if you want to be good, obey all the commandments. Don't break any of them, ever. And then you'll be good. Now, are there any people in here that can obey, has obeyed all the commandments and never broke any? Then there's nobody in here that's good according to the commandments. Does that make sense? This is just so plain to me. I don't see how they get confused. I, well, we're going to get into the confusing part later. But yeah, so nobody can do it. If you start now, you just started now. You should have been dead already. You can't start now and say, I'm doing it. But there was a time when you didn't do it. So you're worthy of death. So what about the times when you didn't do it? Who's paying for that? Killing the neighborhood cat ain't going to do it, bro. You can't sacrifice Jethro, the Siamese cat. Brother, what are, you, what are we going to do about all the damage you did before you came to the light of obeying the commandments? That's what Jesus was telling him. But you come to me saying, what can you do to be good when you've already done stuff to make you not good? Amen. So you already don't qualify. Amen. Romans 3 and 10. And as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. No, not one. I don't care how much your megaphone cost, you're not righteous. I don't care how many D batteries you done bought. You're not righteous. You know better than the folk you're yelling to. <laughs> Just in case, you know. Amen. God's Ten Commandments and 613 laws delivered through Moses were the perfect instructions of godliness against the sin of man. The laws brought separation to God's people from pagans and gave his people their godly identity. But the law also caused further separation between God and man because the law could not change the heart or intent of man. So the law wasn't perfect. The law actually became a curse unto man because it couldn't change the intent and heart of a man. No, the law can't do that. Amen. Rules can't do that, period. The earthly law can't do that. We wouldn't need a prison. There's a prison because somebody don't want to obey the laws because the laws can't change the intent amen you can cage them up they do all their repenting in the cage let them loose law breaking again amen because they got caught that's not true repentance when you just got caught your heart still hasn't changed the intent of your heart don't change when you get busted you just got caught. Give it some time. You'll start trying to figure out how not to get caught again. Amen. But when there's a true change, you don't have to get caught. You just decide, I'm changing this. I'm going to do better. Only Christ in dwelling in your heart can change your heart's intent. Can I keep preaching? Yes, this is why Jesus came. He did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it and pay it in full so that we can use his blood to be reconciled to God and be in fellowship with him again. That's what it was about. It wasn't about the, us being in fellowship with him through the law. It was about us being in fellowship with him through our hearts. See, the law couldn't change our hearts, but Jesus can change our hearts. So Jesus gave his life to fix our hearts 
so we can truly be in fellowship not just obeying commandments but actually in fellowship through love that's in our hearts I mean what kind of wife you want you want a regular wife or you want a Stepford wife you want a robot wife that's confined to certain rules and regulations that wouldn't be no fun you'd get sick of that but if she's in relationship with her heart and loves you from her heart, it hit a little different, don't it? And that's what God was after with mankind. That's the way it was when he made them. The Bible said they walked together in the cool of the day. Had a real relationship and man fell, broke it, became sinful and separated himself from God. And Jesus came to reconcile him back. So we can be in fellowship with love in our hearts. Some of y'all in here was mass murderers before Jesus came in your heart. Amen. You had a bloody hairy axe in the trunk of your car. You threw it away when you got saved. Cleaned it off. You use it just for wood now. had a hatchet with brass knuckles on the end but you was trying to do some damage <laughs> but God saved you he changed your heart murderous thoughts don't come in your mind no more oh uh, amen somebody did you wrong you used to think about shooting them now you just pray for them those thoughts don't come in your head no more because God changed your heart through Jesus Christ. You accepted him in your heart. He changed your heart. So you don't have to worry about abolishing or doing away with the law. When your heart is changed, you'll please the Lord. The perfect sacrifice makes our appearance to God perfect in that Jesus paid the penalty of our sin. Romans 5 and 10. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Yeah. Not by the law, but by his life. Yes, Can I keep preaching in here? Yes. Jesus is speaking to the ruler. Based on his own desire to be perfect and not as a man that truly wants his help. Because he already knew the intent of the ruler's heart. So he's coming saying, man, how can I be good? Basically, how can I be like you? I got all this money, these possessions. But man, people are looking up to you, talking to you like you. I mean, you're somebody special. So how can I be down with that? How can I be like that? That's the wrong attitude. So Jesus was just saying what he wanted him to hear at first to lure him in. Okay, well, here's what you do. Obey the commandments. I've already done that. No, you can't. This is a big difference in him and the thief on the cross. The thief on the cross was like, remember me. Just remember me. You go, I know where you're going. I'm wrong for what I did, but just remember me. Can you just remember me, Jesus? Bible even said he rebuked the other thief. Man, what are you talking about? This is the son of God. We deserve what we're getting. But if you could just remember me. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. See, that's why I don't understand trying to delete Jesus. Jesus can make a decision that quick. Okay, you can come. Man, I'm going to be on Jesus' side. He spoke crazy. Oh, he's just a prophet. Uh, you know, Jesus, he was a good man. Uh, you crazy. Brother, he's the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father except by him. What are you talking about? Your crazy dress self. Man, you crazy. I need all of Jesus. Every bit of what he did. Amen. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of son of soul and spirit, and 
of the joints and the marrow. And then listen to this. And is a what? Discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. That's what Jesus did. The Bible said in the beginning was the word. See the picture? The word was with God and the word was God. Word came down, dwelt among us as flesh. So the word discerned what the ruler's intent was. Can I keep preaching? Yes. The man asks, which laws? Jesus? Like, which ones? I've been doing all of them, so which one? Jesus stated six of them, including the one that the young man could not do. The last one. Love your neighbor as yourself. He said it, and the guy said, I've already done that. So Jesus is looking at him like, so you mean you have some poor neighbors and you rich? Mm-mm. You, you don't know what love your neighbor as yourself means that means the way you loved yourself to get all that money and stuff give that to somebody else <laughs> this law means that if you truly love your neighbor as yourself you would want him to have everything you have and be like you are Instead of you being like you are. So you want him to be like you are if you love him as yourself. So you the one with the money, yourself. That's yourself. Your neighbor needs to have what you have in order for you to love him like yourself. That's how hard it is to obey that law. See, see, it got quiet, see. Nobody want to, hey, yeah, that's what it means. Everybody you see that don't have nothing, give them all you got. That's loving them like yourself. And you know how I know? Because Jesus did that. He loved us like himself. He gave us everything he had. That's why he said, how you going to equate yourself to me, little ruler? Brother, I'm going to give everything I have for you. The Bible even says in one account, he looked on him and loved him. He loved him to the point to give him everything. So, brother, you can't obey the whole law. This goes against our fallen human capacity. We can't do it. We can't do it. And Jesus knew we couldn't do it. God knew we couldn't do it. That's why Jesus died. To make up the difference because we can't do that. Every time you see somebody with no shoes, give them your shoes. Every time you see somebody with no shirt, give them your shirt. No money, give them all your money. No car, give them your car. That's loving them like yourself. You really want to obey all this? It's, it's more than uh, uh, the Sabbath, brother. Brother with the speaker. <laughs> Can I keep going? Galatians 5 and 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt what? You know, if you love your neighbor as yourself, you'll never sin. Because whenever you sin, you offend your neighbor. Yeah. There's no sin you can commit without hurting your neighbor. Somebody is affected by your sin. Yeah. Jesus was showing him that there's no way to fulfill the commandments fully without him. Jesus had to be our mediator and make us worthy of God by paying for our sins. Jesus became our sin on the cross because our power is unable to fulfill the law. The power of the blood of Jesus does it for us. Amen. Second Corinthians 5 and 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. See, the law was to make us righteous. But Jesus became the righteousness of God and gave us God's righteousness. So when we accept him, we accept his righteousness. Now that don't mean you gotta go and live like a heathen. We've already had that sermon. 
That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying if you plan on fulfilling the law to the letter to make yourself good, like the rich young ruler, you're going to walk away sorrowfully. Can I keep preaching in here? You young folk get on a YouTube channel and somebody just doesn't convince you. And then, you, you know, they start, hey, brother, so about this Sabbath, I mean, should, should we keep it? Brother, you can keep it if you want to. I mean, you can. Just don't condemn nobody to hell if they don't. That's all I'm asking. Brother, y'all have in church. Sunday, man. I have a church on Sunday and Saturday. It's the Sabbath. Well, the children of Israel didn't have church on the Sabbath. They rested on the Sabbath. You don't know what rest means? Rest don't mean service. Rest don't mean church. If I'm preaching, I'm working. That ain't no rest. What are you talking about? But Sunday, that's, they changed it. They, who is, the, boy, they did a whole bunch of stuff, didn't they? They, they, they changed it to Sunday because that's the worship of the sun. Well, Saturday is the worship of Saturn. Saturn is the one that eats his own children. In the same mythology of the sun god. Oh, see, I see what you're doing. Hey, uh, I see, I, I, I see what you try. <laughs> I'm making sense. That's what I'm doing. You crazy. Went on a YouTube channel, brother. I'm telling you, don't you try that junk in here. I'm going to find out and I'm coming to you with this microphone on a Sunday. We already got the procedure. I'm going to walk right up to you. So brother, I heard you've been teaching something that's not in line with scripture. <laughs> Keeping the commandments to perfection is impossible. And even when you feel you are keeping them, you are not. So how are the commandment keepers condemning people for not keeping the commandment? And keeping the commandments. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you can't condemn them. But if you're condemning them, you're breaking the commandment. If you're condemning them for breaking the commandment, you're breaking a commandment. You standing in front of their church with a megaphone and yelling, interrupting their service. You're not treating your neighbor as yourself. You're breaking a commandment. How would you like somebody to come in your house while you and your many wives are asleep and bring a megaphone in there? Hey! Hey! God said you'd be offended. I'm trying to sleep. You're disturbing my sleep, brother. You're breaking a commandment. <laughs> well, you're disturbing our service, brother. You breaking the commandment. Can I preach in here? Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace ye are saved through what? Faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the what? Is the gift of God giving is God giving you the ability to keep the commandments? Is that the gift? No. No, the gift is your status, saved by faith, through grace. That's the gift. Can I keep going? Oh, Lord. Here they are, the Israelites by blood, the black ones. Are, and Israelites, people from Israel are all kinds of colors. So I'm not saying that there aren't some black, real black Israeli people or real black Jew. There are some over in Ethiopia, those areas, because everybody over there is tinted by the sun. Yeah. Have you felt the degrees over there? 
140, 150 in some of those areas? Yeah. Air condition just quit. He said, you know what? <laughs> Ra won this. Ra won this round. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's Israelite, yeah, different colors everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But man, come on now. You are not a descendant and you aren't special and the white man is not the devil. All that's a lie. All that's a lie. Yeah, you ain't special. No, you're not. And you know you're not. You know, you, you know you're not special. Look at your record. Look at your money. Look at all the dumb stuff you've done. Look at all the stupid decisions you What makes you special? You just like the rest of us. Amen? You just like all the rest of us. Sacred name movement and oh, oh y'all weren't calling him by his Hebrew name. Cause I'm not Hebrew. Why would I speak an English sentence but use Hebrew in the middle of it? If I'm not speaking Hebrew, brother, I'm not speaking Hebrew. And I've never cast a demon out by calling him by his Hebrew name. The demons recognize when I say Jesus. They know exactly who I'm talking to. They know exactly what I'm talking about. They even dislodge themselves and remove themselves at the name of Jesus. So how about I keep using that and you go on the internet and find some more beautiful ways to say it. And Sabbath keeping that, like I said, there's nothing wrong with you keeping the Sabbath. But when you start saying that, hey, you know, God really wants us to do this. Okay, that was for the Jewish nation. We are a Gentile nation. And Jesus fulfilled the Sabbath. It was a rest. I'm trying to have Sabbath every day. I need rest every day. But we're not talking about service. You're talking about having church? Brother, that don't have nothing to do with the Sabbath. At this one church, I went to speak for them and they wouldn't let me put my product out there until the sun went down. Brother, you can't put your product out until the sun went down. I'm like, why? Because it's, it's the Sabbath. It's, okay, so I see paid staff working, paid musicians, paid security, everybody working. Brother, y'all don't know what Sabbath means? But they working in the service. They still working. God was working on the world. And he rested. He didn't have church on the seventh day. <laughs> Come on, Gabriel, get that horn. And play me a praise break. <laughs> it did not happen that way. God, look at somebody say he rested. That's the seventh day. Rest. Jesus was telling this man, if you can keep the commandments, then you can escape sin's penalty. But who can? He had already broke them. Yeah. He broke the last one right there. Because yeah. he couldn't love his neighbor as himself. The other disciples gave up everything and followed Jesus. No one without the payment that Jesus made can do it. If the wages of sin is death, then once we break the commandments, we should die. That's the part I don't understand about commandment keeping. What happens if you break one? What do you do? I'm serious. Who knows? Does anybody know? What, what do they do when they break one? Huh? Make up something new. But really, what do they do? If you're bound to those and those are your path to heaven, what happens when you break one? Oh, well, God gives us grace. What? Wait, what? Wait, what? What did you just say? 
So is it grace through faith or is it obedience to the law? How are you still living, brother, when you break the commandments? If the penalty for breaking it is death. And why is the white man evil and you done done evil stuff? Can I preach in here? I know I'm preaching. It's getting quiet. Woo! Somebody getting dizzy. Oh, Try to pull the demon down. No, don't manifest yet. No, not in here. Not in here. <laughs> How can you still live after breaking the commandments? Look at somebody and say, Jesus is the only way. My goodness gracious. Ephesians 2 and 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye whom sometimes were afar off are made what? Nigh by what? The blood of Christ. Man, I thank God for Jesus. All right. I don't even know I'm not. I'm not almost done. So many sub religions and sects like black. Hebrew Israelites, Sabbath keepers, and others believe that keeping the law is the only way to please God. Some even believe that God only hears them when they call his name in Hebrew, etc. People have made God like a man because of the trauma they have experienced at the hands of man. God is not like a man. He doesn't live in the past and hold us accountable to our past. Psalms 89 and 34. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. They try to use this and say, see, he ain't going to break his covenant. He ain't going to break the commandment. Well, he, he created a new covenant though. What about that covenant? And see, this is why you can't get in an argument with these folks. The reason why you can't get in an argument with them is because in, in order to argue effectively you have to establish an absolute that's the only way you can argue so when I establish an absolute which my absolute is the word of God old and new testament that's my absolute so if you're going to take half of that absolute out and make it relative to your argument then we can't argue we can't discuss anything because you took out the proof I have that what you're saying is bogus because that's my absolute so when you go to poking holes in the Bible, well, why wasn't this book in there? And the white man took this book out. And I, Brother, we, don't, we ain't got nothing to talk about. Because I believe that the whole Bible, the way it is, is enough to save my soul and get me into heaven. And God left it just like that. So I don't need nothing added to it. I don't need nothing taken away from it. That's my absolute. So I'm not arguing with you if you're questioning that. Because that's the only reason we're discussing anything. He sent Jesus to redeem our past, present, and future. But Jesus lifts the punishment of transgressing the law and forgives us every time we repent. Oh, he don't forgive you every time you repent? He forgives me every time I repent because his Bible said he does. Bible said he does, so I believe him. Now, I don't know if you're trying to keep the law when you mess up Keeping the law, I don't know what you got to do at that point. You going to sacrifice a bull or something? That's going to be expensive. You know how much a bull costs? Brother, that's meat for a year. You can eat off that for a whole bar. And where you going to put it? Bull going to kick your tail, brother. I hope he does, too. Sacrificing me. I hope he charge at you and him you up. <laughs> Leave that bull alone. That's some ignorance. Where you get it? Yeah, what you gonna do? He said those sacrifices, he don't want them anymore because he gave his son who's the perfect sacrifice. So none of these other sacrifices matter. Amen. You're not atoning with natural things. Oh, I'm gonna grow my hair in locks because these locks represent the, the, the vow of the Nazarite. No clippers shall cut, cutteth my hair, and no good job shall find you. <laughs> but 
But Jesus lifts the punishment of transgressing the law and forgives us every time. Look at somebody say every time. Every time we repent. This doesn't sit well with people that are offended, traumatized, or hurt. Uh-oh. Now, you fin- now, now here's the problem. Jesus' way is too easy. Jesus lets people off the hook that need to be punished. Uh Uh-huh. Megaphone, turn it up to 10. Because I'm mad at somebody. Somebody needs to be punished. They want the transgressors punished. They want their transgressors punished. So people turn to the law and seek to punish others and keep them out of heaven for payback. They would rather get even instead of forgiving and loving them. Man, I'm preaching it in this place. That's what's wrong with them. That's what's wrong with them. That's it right there. Matthew 23, 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, and folks dressed like that. (laughs) Hypocrites! For ye are like unto white sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful on the outside. Brother, that's some nice felt and some nice sequin you sold in it. It's beautiful on the outside. But are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanness. So you look good on the outside. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto me. I see your little handmade signs written in crayon. You little set up out there, I see it. You looking like you really are doing something. But inside, you're full of hypocrisy and iniquity because there's somebody you hate. You hate somebody because of the way your life turned out. So you're trying to use religion and hatred and spewing it. And using the law to punish people. Because you feel punished. This causes people to join organizations and religions. That allow their anger to be channeled. Into a hateful form of worship. Where certain people groups and individuals cannot be saved. For the wrong they have done. White man can't be saved. He can't be saved for the wrong he's done. Well, you know, around Isaiah 19, God punished the black folks for enslaving a group of people. The danger of this false doctrine is that their own sin will always overtake them. And with the same unforgiveness they teach, they will be destroyed. Bible said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. Matthew 23 and 13. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, and people that like to dress like that. <laughs> Hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves. You stopping folks from going. Summary. That didn't take long, did it? Did that bless somebody? It didn't bless no Hebrew Israelite in here. No sacred name. Man, why you just want to be contrary? Get healed. Amen. Get healed. Your trauma. Somebody did you wrong? Sure. Are they deserving of death? Sure. But have you not done things deserving of death? Sure. No church is perfect because churches are led by imperfect people. Anybody agree with that? Does anybody agree with that? But this does not give people the right to interrupt church services and disturb the peace because they are unhappy with the church. God gave us all kinds of choices when it comes to church. So why can't people just find another one? (laughs) 
The enemy wants to do away with church and stop it because Jesus said that the gates of hell would not win against it. So it's not just witches, warlocks, and Satanists that are trying to end church. And it's not just the government or legislators that are attacking the church either. It's primarily offended church people that are trying to end it. Their hearts are full of evil intent and bitterness. And they call themselves saved. How are you saved with evil intent? Oh, crazy. Didn't I start this message off with that? <laughs> they maliciously join up with beliefs that can give them opportunity to yell, scream, and be unreasonable against churches. So they join an organization just to get back at a church because that organization attacks churches. They assemble outside of the church to interrupt them or they form online groups against them. They feel that their grief warrants the destruction of the church and that it should Closed down for good. Really? There's some folk I know God didn't call the pastor. I feel it in my gizzard. Do I have a gizzard? Oh, we already had that discussion. The doctor said I don't have one. Okay. That's, what my, that's what my teeth are for, right? Okay. We learned that. The, the kids, it was so funny. The teens was the one sending it to me. Uh, this is what a gizzard does, Pastor. I mean, yes, you don't need one of those if you have teeth. <laughs> All I know is if you fry it up and put some hot sauce on it, it's delicious. That's when I need teeth for it. No, don't you frown, J. Brian. You got that young, young palate. You don't know nothing about gizzards. You know. Gizzards with a, with a pep on the side. Boy. Yeah. I don't know how I don't know how my body categorizes it once it's in there. Hey, my body might be confused. You ain't no duck. Why why is this in here? But hey, it's delicious. <laughs> but their hearts are full of evil intent. Oh, I already read all that. So they feel that their grief warrants the destruction of the church and that it should close down for good. They don't care if people are being saved. Lives are being changed or whether or not God is in it. They just want the church to end because they are angry at it and their lives didn't turn out right. Yeah, you want to destroy it. You don't care if people are being helped. You're that angry? Oh, but what I was saying about the gizzards, I know some pastors that <laughs> just came back. Holy Ghost must want me to say it. I started something. But <laughs> I know some pastors like, I don't, that, I, I mean, I know they're not supposed to be pastors. I just, I just know it. I can tell. But it's not mine to tell them that. Because the Bible even says if a man desires the office. So I let him do it. And I'm not going to protest and try to stop him and sh shut it down. Because guess what? If two people in there hear the gospel and their lives are changed, then it served a purpose. Can I keep preaching? Yeah. They don't care if people are being saved, lives are changed, or whether or not it's God in it. They just want the church to end because they are angry at it and their lives didn't turn out right. This is the epitome of lawlessness. How are you going to obey the law and you acting like this? This is the epitome of lawlessness. Because the Bible said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So how are you becoming the gates of hell? Against the church. And these people are fighting against the very God that they say they are obeying. Look at somebody and say, get over yourself. Get over 
Get over yourself. Listen, this is my message to all of the sleepers in here. You are no better than anyone. You have as much sin as anyone. You have disobeyed just as many commandments as the people you are yelling at. You hate your life and blame God for it. You hate the decisions you made and the people you chose to follow. You chose to follow them. But those were all your choices. And you cannot overcome bad choices with more bad choices. It's a bad choice to judge a church because Jesus is the only one that can judge them. He showed us how he judged them back in the book of Revelations, Revelations 2, by giving them a what? A space to repent and turn back to him. That's how he judged them. He did not abolish them or destroy them because they had compromised. He didn't call the name of the pastors or even who had the Jezebel spirit at Thyatira to give them grace to change their way. He didn't even say who that was. He just called it the spirit of Jezebel. <laughs> he was gracious and merciful because he understood that we are not perfect and people error. We will all need this same mercy. Y'all gonna let me preach to y'all today? One more paragraph. To go from church to church shouting and disturbing services because people are not keeping the commandments of the Old Testament is rude and malicious. Jesus commands for us to love our neighbor as ourselves. In order to enforce the commandments, you must keep them all and maliciously attacking a fellowship no matter what condition it is in, is a transgression against the very law you are fighting for. Yeah. Deal with your hurt, your pain, your issues, and your bad decisions. Yeah. Allow Jesus Christ to make you a new creation. When you sincerely become new, your motives will change. Yeah. When you become new, your heart changes. Yeah. So it's not about trying to live in the confines of a law and struggling to do it. Get your heart changed. You'll obey laws automatically when your heart is changed. Allow Jesus to make you a new creation. When you sincerely become new, your motives will change and you will fully understand how the blood of Jesus can wash away your past sins and make you better than before. Amen? Amen. Romans 3 and 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. No. No. What did I just say? No. What did the word just say? Nobody. What did it just say? Nobody. The deeds of the law, no flesh can be justified. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. Is it? The righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that what? Amen. Believe. Well, there is no difference. For all, the white man, the Edomites, the Negroites, all the ites. Ghettoites, ratchetites, there's some ratchetites. That's a whole new tribe. All. How much is all? All, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is where? In Jesus Christ. Everyone stand to your feet. Oh, that's okay. The, the slow hand clap. We're going to clear them out of here. Before we do this, very expensive, two, three hundred thousand dollar expansion to make this building bigger. We're going to make it smaller first. Amen. 
you on assignment and somebody has sent you in here, it's best to just go on and stop coming. Because we're going to preach the truth in here. And we're going to have white people in here, black people, we're going to have some Edomites, any red-haired white folk in here. We got, we got everything. <laughs> everything. We're going to have it in here. It's going to be in here. So your presence as a racist is not welcome at ABC. Whether you're a natural racist or a spiritual racist, whatever kind of racist you are, we are one family in Christ Jesus of the same blood, the redemptive blood of Jesus. So no matter what blood we had before, if we had donkey blood, now we all have Jesus Christ's blood. Amen? And we're redeemed by that blood. So we can't have nobody in here blood blocking. Brother, you're not special. I promise you. So don't come in here thinking you are. Now, some of y'all got this stuff in your family. Some of you got it on your job, folk bothering you or whatever. I'm going to pray for you right now that God will give you the words. You know, one thing that I, that, that I love that the Bible said in the book of Acts when, well, not in the book of Acts, but in one of the gospels where Jesus was sending them out. And he told them, don't take a script. That's right. Don't plan on what you're going to say. Amen. In that very same moment, I'm going to give you what to say. Amen. We're going to pray for that anointing right now. So if that's you and you need that, come on up. And we're going to pray that God fashions you to where you can stand up and do... Delvin. We're going to stand up. <laughs> you don't need this prayer. We're going to pray that you... But yeah, if that's you, come on up. You got them in your family. Folks trying to talk about you. You going to that church and listening to that man. It's just a man. You ain't supposed to be listening. We're not supposed to follow a man. Well, what they're really saying is Christ as a man. Because they don't want to follow Christ. But we know God gives us pastors. He gives us shepherds. He gives us a, he gives us a whole five-fold ministry to listen to. But these folks have been hurt by authority, so they try to cancel out all authorities. But we're going to believe that God is going to speak to us in that hour. Give us what to say when we need to say what we need to say. And sometimes you don't need to say anything. Amen. Sometimes, you know, some folks not going to understand Christ till they try Christ. Did you know that? They're not going to understand what you're saying. They're not going to understand the change that has happened to you. They're not going to understand why you're not like you used to be. They haven't had that experience. And it's hard to explain that experience to somebody that doesn't believe. So maybe, it's, maybe, maybe you need prayer to just, Lord, hold my tongue and keep me from going in on them. That's not what this message was about. This not, message is not to give you ammunition so you can go trying to blast them. They got to come back for everything I said. Everything I said. They got to come back in a way to twist it back to them. But we're going to pray that God gives you discernment in that hour. So everyone just bow your heads. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, for every one of your wonderful believers that are here, Lord. Every person that is here. Every person that believes and has faith in you, God. Has faith in the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ to save us all from our sins. Not that the, 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 the law was abolished, but that it was fulfilled. It was fulfilled in Jesus and so we know everything we need is in Jesus. What he leads us to do, we'll do. What he speaks to us, we know it's about, it's about Jesus. So Father, we give our hearts to you. Open them up so that your son can live inside of us. Steer us, guide us, be our boundaries, be our laws, be our rules. Help us to obey the laws that you have, Father God, for us, God. Help us, God, to have understanding when doing these things. Help us to function in this world, Father God, and not make enemies in order to make converts. Father God, we ask right now that you would even speak through us, Lord, and take our tongues and 
let us come under your power when we're talking when we're navigating through conversations with these people father god when these people come at us to attack us and try to try to hinder us or hurt us with their words because of the hurt help us father god to see the hurt understand it and even address it when necessary maybe they can be delivered maybe god we can help them maybe father god we can say something to inspire them to make the very changes that we made in Jesus name and everyone just lift your hands all over the building and father fill us with your Holy Ghost so it will lead us and guide us in all truth so that it would give us what to say when we need to say it father God that it will show us what needs to be done when it's time to move God let your spirit lead us in these end times so we don't make decisions that will hinder what you want to do through us God carry us through these end times and keep us God in your care in Jesus name and help us with these offended people these angry people these people that are hurt these people that are bitter these people that have no mercy Father God help us Lord to show them love in spite of it all in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen Amen. Hallelujah. On your way to your seats, hug somebody and say, I'm going to show love. Tell them, love is my weapon. Love is what I fight with. Hallelujah. 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 Show them love. I ain't pulling up for no argument. Brian and ain't pulling up for no argument downtown you just just keep driving amen <laughs> love these are brothers and sisters they've been hurt a lot of them church hurt things have happened to them people have let them down they've let themselves down and so they connect with these religious groups that exploit their anger we need to pray for them pray for them amen that could have been us amen so we need to pray for them. amen amen